So uh, here, here's a story about the effect of domain. Um, we had this gig, it was out in the Midwest, Renaissance Festival. And uh, our hosts were, uh, in addition to paying us very well, they were incredibly gracious. And they put us up at this really fine old hotel downtown. And this hotel had a five-star restaurant in it. So uh, I took this, my crew with me at that time was a young woman and, uh, and two guys. And they, were all, they all were kind of pals. And uh, I told them that for this gig, as, uh, I was going to take them to dinner in the hotel at night, go down that, that five-star restaurant. And dinner was on me. But it was black tie. Well, to start with, they didn't know what the hell that meant. <laughs> I said, black tie means you wear your tux, man. And they said, oh, so I, I have a suit that I, I wore for high school graduation. Is that, is that where I said, is it a tux? He said, well, no. I said, well, then no. Black tie means black tie. You wear your tux. He said, I don't have a tux. I said, well, go get a tux. He said, where am I going to go get a tux? I said, figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so these two these two young lads, who were just just hardly housebroken, really, <laughs> and uh, so we went out to do this gig, and they, they they finally they got their tuxes together, and, and I I took them to dinner. So uh, there was me and my lady, and uh, and we had our uh, great Dane Tory with us. And, uh, and these wonderful people, they, they set up a little uh, private uh, banquet room for us and they you know, put us in there so we could have our dog with us for dinner. And, uh, and so here come, you know, frickin' frack in their tuxedos. And, and the young woman uh, showed up last and, and, uh, and she had made herself a, a, a new gown for the evening and was wearing elbow length gloves and so I mean she's a gorgeous girl to start with and now she was just a knockout in the first round <laughs> you know so uh, so we're having dinner and what I find interesting is what I observed in their behavior during dinner because as I said, these guys were like two mongrel dogs fighting over a bone most of the time. But at dinner, they were quiet, reserved, composed, courteous. Uh, excuse me, would you pass the... Thank you so much. <laughs> I was like, who are these guys? And, and uh, in fact, I... I when my lady and I went back to our room after dinner, first thing she said was, what the hell happened to them? <laughs> I just, I've never seen them behave like that before. So we thought about this quite a bit. Now, now, now there's a couple of things going on here. One is the Pygmalion principle, which says that people tend to conform to the expectations placed upon them. And, and I certainly had placed expectations on these guys. I, I clearly said, you're not going to make an idiot out of me by acting like a couple of fucking goons at this up-class hotel, right? So they were on notice that, you know, the frat boy shit was kaputsky, right? So, so there was that. But there's more. When they donned this attire, they took unto themselves certain expectations that went along with that. See, that's, that attire means something. It has associations. It has beliefs attached to it. And, uh, and I realized that these guys had probably never worn a tux, or, or maybe once if they ever had, but had seen it. What was it that gave them these expectations what was it that changed their behavior in association with wearing a tuxedo? And I realized what their model was. I realized 
who it was. And I realized the behavior they were trying to emulate. It was Bond, James Bond. <laughs> now the thing about Bond, which makes him such a wonderful character, first he gets laid a lot. And that's not a bad thing. But that's not unique to him as a fictional character. He always gets over on the bad guys, which is cool. But that's not unique to him as a fictional character. The thing that makes him so compelling is that, unlike his martini, he may emotionally be stirred, but he's never shaken. <laughs> 